Hello and welcome to this very quick video, a quick tip on OpenTX. Now this is for all of you pilots that have models with more than one engine and you want to use differential thrust. Now it's to answer a question from a gentleman called Tom and Tom left a comment on one of my other videos. Again, if you are new to all this stuff and OpenTX, go and check out the OpenTX Mix School. It starts very simply and builds on those simple principles in some quite complicated stuff. And what Tom is asking for is the the ability to change the amount of differential thrust when he's flying his model. So let's do that in this particular instance. So let me open uh, a little file here that's got all these pieces in. So before we get too far into this, let's just have a quick look at how normal differential thrust is handled. Now obviously you can have the same four inputs for any kind of uh, fixed wing model. The trick comes in mixes. And what you can do is you can duplicate and have the same output on different uh, channels. So for example, in this one, in, on the receiver, channel uh, for the outputs four and five on that receiver would plug into the ESCs for the two different throttles. And that would mean that as I move and increase the throttle, then we can see channels four and five are going up and down. But there's no differential thrust at all. As I move the rudder about, both the throttles stay in the same position. So that's the very basic part of it. Now, if we look at this next one, this differential thrust, I've mixed in, in the mixes, a little bit of the rudder. And all I've done is I've just added in an extra line for the rudder with a weight of 20%. One of them is minus, one of them is plus. And the effect of that looks like this. So if we increase the throttle and then we increase the rudder, so as you, I move the rudder about, you can actually see, if I just kind of lock it into a particular position, as I move it around, you can see there, there is the differential thrust actually working to speed up one motor and slow down the other one to give you that differential thrust. Now, the thing is with this is that the amount of change that happens with that is all around this number here. And you'll notice that on one motor, it's minus 20 and on the other motor it's plus 20. If we wanted a much bigger effect than that, we could increase them both. Do that one as well. And now if we simulate it, pop it up to there, move it across. You can see that the effect now, the differential thrust effect is much, much bigger. But what the question is here is, can you do that with a, some kind of uh, rotating control so that you can change that effect dynamically without going in here and changing those numbers? The answer is in OpenTX, yes, of course you can. You can do pretty much anything in OpenTX. So this is how I've done it. Now the inputs have changed slightly. There's an extra thing in here. The mixes look kind of similar and we have something in here in the special functions. But let me go through these uh, relatively quickly. Uh, again, check out the OpenTX Mix School. But in the inputs, what I've done, I've created on another channel that isn't going to be presented on the receiver. It's just a handy way to kind of keep track of it all. What I've done is I've created uh, a control out of S1. S1 is the rotary control on the radio. And all I've done here is I've just taken 20% of that. So similar from before, we could actually increase that to whatever value you wanted. But 20% means that we're not getting the full travel. The other thing that I've done on here is I've just made it so that it's taking it from the positive side. So from the middle position up and not the negative side. And I'll show you why I've done that in a minute. But that means we have a rotary control that we've edited a little bit. So we're not getting a full travel. We're just getting a little bit of the travel from the middle position as we rotate it up. So that is the control we're gonna to use to do the funky stuff. From special functions, we've selected on and the action one of the actions is to adjust a global variable. And we're going to use global variables here. We're going to change the global variable and then use the global variable to then change the amount of uh, difference that we can affect. So what we're going to do is adjust global, global variable one using the source. And you can have lots of different ones here, but we're going to use the source 
of the input. So here's the inputs that we've got. We've got the throttle aileron elevator rudder that we've already got, the standard ones, and there's that 10th channel that we've just been looking at, D throttle. Make sure it is turned on and that'll work. And then the last thing I've done is in mixes is whereas this before was uh, just a rudder and just a hard number, either 20 or 30 as we've just looked at, now it says global variable one. So that is the thing that's changing here. So what's actually happening is as we move the control, the value of the global variable is changing because we've linked it to the global variable GV1 here. And the mix is what we're saying is use that global variable to change the amount of the effect. So again, just take note, one of the global variables is a minus global variable and the other one is a positive global variable. So there's global variable positive and negative and you need to do that to make sure that they operate in the right way with it set up like that. Let me show you how it works. So here we are back on the radio. Here we are flying along. At the moment we don't really have any differential thrust. Let's just make it so that it does. There we go. So there we are, our rudder working, we're flying along at 21% throttle. That is because at the moment, the S1 is almost at the bottom position. As I increase S1, can you see that the global variable is changing? The maximum it's going to change to is 20, and that's because we're taking 20% of the signal. And then if we go below zero, can you see that the values don't change at all? So what we're going to do is we'll put it about there and then now as I do my uh, rudder piece you can see that the differential mixing for the two motors is working fine however if we have the rudder hard over uh, I can actually with this control decide how much differential thrust I want to play with with it so far hopefully you are just the last thing I'll mention here is the reason why I'm only doing it on the positive side if I did uh, basically the full thing let me simulate that as I move this rotary control now watch what happens to global variable it goes negative and it goes positive that necessarily isn't what we want to happen because what happens with that is if I'm flying along and I'm, I'm using the, the rudder, if I have from the middle going up the right value, there we go, so now, there we go, my differential uh, thrust from the two motors is working perfectly. If I went around the other way and got a negative value, then it actually working the wrong way around. So that's why, just for safety, I would just uh, make sure that it's just on the positive side of the stick and then it means that you can't accidentally uh, mess up your thrust by having it in the wrong place. A couple of other things I'll probably do with this. Uh, make sure that when you are getting everything ready, make sure that the pop warnings are on. Um, make sure that you don't set off with the potentiometer in a slightly different place. Uh, you could use offsets so that it has a minimum value. There's loads of other things that you can do. But hopefully, uh, but hopefully, Tom, that answers it for you. That's the way that I would do it. Uh, using global variables, you're absolutely right, is the way to do it. Uh, so create a little input so you can change the input to work in the way you want. I would always have it just the positive side, reduce the amount of the uh, control that you want, and then make sure that that's all set up as a special function to change the global variable and then use the global variable as the weight for the effect for the mix. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media and if you're trying to learn about a subject then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.